What's going on guys, welcome to my first NHL 20 cover bust. As you can see by the title there, we're being the Seattle Sockeyes expansion team. This might be the only cover bust I do for NHL 20, so it'll be a lot of fun I think doing the expansion draft and trying to win a cup here in three years. As you guys can see right there, that is the team logo. There is like that navy blue tee behind it, but as you guys are about to see, it'll actually kind of blend in with the jersey. I tried another variation there, but wasn't a huge fan of it. So I'll show you guys our jerseys here. I think they're pretty sharp to be honest with you. So right there's the home, obviously going with the navy blue and bright green colors that Seattle's used to with the Seahawks, the Sounders, even the Sonics. That's another reason why I went the Sockeyes. I think right now they're either going to be the Sockeyes, the Emeralds, or the Totems. Those are like the three most likely team names. And I feel like Seattle will probably stick with the double S. Again, Seahawks, Sounders, Sonics, it's all like SS. And next, let's look at the away jerseys. I think this one turned out pretty sharp too. Again, it kind of sucks we have that T behind it, which honestly you can't even tell. It just looks like a rock or something, but I wish we could have made that all white, unfortunately, with how like the colors are laid out with the logo, really nothing we could do. So again, that's the way jersey. I don't think that looks too bad at all. And lastly here again, this is the home jersey. If you like the colors work, the logo, that's definitely the closest thing we had to a Sockeyes, so had to use it. Quick look here as well at the details. Obviously, Seattle Sockeyes, play-by-play team -play names the Salmon, because Sockeyes not available. Abbreviation C, Arena name, Key Arena. So, Hopefully here, three years, starting off with the expansion draft, we can bring a Stanley Cup to Seattle. And real quick guys, I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you need a domain, website, or online store, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to help you build your online presence and run your business. So if you guys are looking to start a website, look no further than Squarespace. They have a ton of different custom templates and layouts you can choose from, one that will surely fit your need. As well, if you sign up today, you actually get a custom URL free for the first year. They also have a lot of tools for SEO and analytics that will really help you drive people to your website. And this will allow you to look behind the scenes and see what's working and what's not. So head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to start, go to squarespace.com slash tactics.hd to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Also guys, I've had a ton of people asking why custom rosters. So right here's a look at all the creative players we have. Adam Fox here, I guess I'll go through so you guys can see the potentials. 75, medium top four. Alex Newhook there, Alex Turcott, Cole Caulfield, Cam York. Igor Shashjorkin, who's finally be playing the AHL, I think. Joel Farabee, Jesper Walsh, will be a 2021 prospect, potentially first overall. Same goes for Luke Hughes there. Matthew Boldy, Nikita Gusev, obviously on the Devils, but hasn't played an NHL game yet, so not in the game. Oliver Wallstrom have actually decreased there to a medium top six. I feel like that's a bit more for the medium elite. Spencer Knight, Trevor Zegris, Vitaly Krasov, and finally Vasily Podkolzin. So those are all the created players. Not too many, just because I wanted to kind of get going with this video. It takes forever creating players. I feel like all these guys will be definitely impactful, though, in the first three years. Also, on top of this, I've actually gone in and edited a bunch of player ratings and potentials for existing players. Nothing too drastic, though, just like small changes, a little boost or a little decrease. I'm sure you guys will notice over the course of the episode. And a really cool new thing you can do in NHL 20 this year, guys, an expansion draft with custom rosters. So this way we don't lose all those created players or the chains we've already made to the existing roster. So this should make the expansion draft that much better. Also, too, of course, we'll be subbing in our Seattle Sockeyes team we've already made. So... I'm hoping here for some success. I haven't done an expansion draft yet, so I feel like I really don't know what players are going to be available. Obviously, we're trying to build a win-now team. We only have three years here. Also, too, if you guys are wondering what's going to happen if we don't win the Stanley Cup, I'm actually going to leave it up to you guys. So in the comments section, comment what my punishment should be if I don't win the Stanley Cup, and I'll be going through and picking one of the comments if we're unable to win it, and I'll probably just post whatever that punishment is on my Instagram, tactics.hd. So hopefully we can win a Stanley Cup here. I see that our AHL team is the Burnaby Aces. Not the best AHL team, but I'm just gonna leave it for now. It's not too big of a deal. And we should be put in the Pacific, or no, we're in the Central, my bad. So we're gonna have to swap here with Arizona. Chances are they'll be going in the Central, and Seattle for sure will be going in the Pacific. After this, of course, we're just gonna make sure all the settings are authentic. And right here, add contract here. This is actually another new feature. So I believe we have to turn this on to make sure that players are gonna, that are gonna be free agents in 2020 don't become free agents in 2019 due to the expansion draft sort of resetting everything. Other than that, the only things we have on there are salary cap and computer trades. And as always, guys, we're using the most authentic settings for this cover bus. So game style, there's full sim. Injuries, though, are off just because they're so annoying. Period length, 20 minutes. Computer trades are on. Draft pick ownership, authentic. Salary cap on. Trade difficulty there is set to hard. Waivers are on as well. We actually have our own set of rules. So as you can see there, unlimited free agent signing just to keep the summers more fun. Max five trades per year, but CPU offers are a bonus. Cannot trade picks past 2022. That way you don't ruin the franchise's future. And we have to keep at least three picks per draft just to keep it realistic. So here we go, guys. All we have left to do is advance to this expansion draft. Again, I haven't done one yet. So curious to see what players are available. I feel like we should be able to make a pretty good team for ourselves. Draft lottery results are in. So I guess they re-rolled the lottery here for a new 2019 draft. They still do that, unfortunately, but 
all the prospects from before will not be there. They'll be on their teams. So we had the third best odds, and we're picking fifth overall. New Jersey again gets first. This time, though, Colorado goes second, Detroit third. So I'm not sure it'll be all, like, created players. Usually it's not that great, the expansion draft. I'm not sure either why we have to do it. I feel like it honestly be more realistic without doing it. But uh, whatever, hopefully we can get, like, a medium elite player there at the fifth overall pick. So here we go, the expansion draft. Obviously, this is really where we can make our team into a contender in a few years. Just going to go team by team here. Don't know who's going to be available. Adam Henrique. Wow. It is giving me all this tutorial stuff. Andre Kasha. Sure. I think Cash is the pick. He's cheaper. Has more potential. Cash is actually a very good pick from Anaheim. Next up here, Arizona. Goligoski, Damaris, Soderberg. Grabner's kind of cheap. Henestroza. 25 and 80. I like that. Again, we're trying to build a team. Actually, was Lawson Kraus available there? Because if he was... Ah, uh, he is too. 21.79, making 1.5 for four years. It's a very solid bomb six forward. Now, because we're taking 30 players, Brandon Carl's available. Um, that's the obvious pick for sure. What I was going to say is because we're taking 30 players and we can only make five trades, we got to make sure a lot of these guys are AHL players. Otherwise, just kind of stuck with bad contracts. McCabe there is pretty good. Ocposo, we're definitely not going to be taking. McCabe there, I think, though, on Buffalo is a good pick. Calgary next. Giordano. Why would you put him... Who did they protect over Giordano? Can I... Is there a way for me to check? I don't know. 3589. Backlund's also decent. They didn't protect Hamannick. So they protected Hannafin. Um, they protected Brody. Sam Bennett's available too. I mean, we're taking Giordano. Like, that is insane. Is there no way for me to... I don't think I can check, like, their protected list. Must be some young defenseman. Maybe Val Mackey, but... That is unreal. Carolina here, Jake Gardner, Brett Pesci, Hayden Flurry, 22 low elite. He almost always grows. Gardner's pretty good too. Not sure why his salary's gone down. Maybe Carolina was actually over the uh, salary cap, which kind of sucks. So I'll take Hayden Flurry there. So far, this team's pretty insane. Augustus in there. That's a really good defenseman as well. 84 overall. Like, we're going to be actually able to compete right out of the bat, I think. Assuming we can get a goaltender. Eric Johnson's a bit expensive, but. He's a solid defenseman, and really, I mean, Comfort is not bad. Zadarov there as well. 3.5 over 79 is pretty expensive. I think might as well go 16 cap it. Yeah, we have a lot of cap space still. Let's go Eric Johnson. He has a solid option. Nick Flino, Nidavera on Columbus, Jenner, Borkstrand, Texier, 1979. I can't believe he's available. I thought he shouldn't be available, I don't think. Um, so I'm not going to take him, I believe. Ooh, Gabe Carlson, 22.76. That's a solid pick for us. I can't believe kind of how good the players are we're getting on this team. Radic Faxa there, Sakara, Alexiak. All right, so Dallas doesn't really have too much going for it. Alexiak might be the play, although we already have a lot of defensemen. Gurianov, 2276. I feel like he's low risk, high reward. And looking at the bottom there, so we've taken seven defensemen already. We're only allowed to take nine. Um, they're, they're all pretty good so far, but we definitely have to start taking some forwards. Darren Helm. Detroit's got really nothing here. Everybody that's available is a pretty bad contract. Adam Ernie. I know he just joined the team, but we're going to take him. Cheap. Can be like a bomb six forward for us. Next up here, the Edmonton Oilers. Adam Larson. So that means they protected Clefbaum. They protected Nurse. I don't know who else they protected after that. It's kind of surprising, honestly, to see him available. Usually it's like Sakara they have to protect, but he's on the team anymore. So I'm not sure who they had to protect there. Matt Benning's available, so I really wish I could see these lists. But regardless, guys, obviously we're taking Adam Larson. That's a very solid pick on the Oilers. Next up here, Florida. Brett Connolly, 3.4 from 80s, pretty expensive. Howard Luck, 23.78. I feel like we needed some AHL players. I think he'll fill that out. So LA Kings next. They should have a goalie. They have Jack Campbell. They also have Peter St. Campbell's there, 27.80. 700 k rate now, then he's extended 1.6 for the next two years. I think that's pretty good for us there. What else did LA have? Because we do have to take a goalie. Brown, Luff. Yeah, I think we're going to go Jack Campbell here. He'll probably be our backup unless there's no better goalie for us to take. I'm not too sure. Eric Stahl, Jared Spurgeon. So, Dumba, Brodeen. I, I'm like missing guys that these teams are protecting, I guess. I just, I don't know. Jared Spurgeon. I think we're taking Jared Spurgeon. Montreal Canadiens next year. Um, let's see. Oh, and I see. So we added that contract here because otherwise Spurgeon would be like an expiring UFA when really he's not. So that helps fix it. 
Um, we need a forward. Or Armia's okay. Uh, actually, can we take a Kincad? He's a pretty... Let's take Kincad there. Montreal doesn't really have a lot available. Next up, Nashville Predators. Yarncroc, 80, making 2 million for 4 years. Seasons, 2.8 for 8 years. If you can get up to like an 81, that's not too bad. We've got him locked in for so long. Um, I mean, 2.8 though is a lot. I feel like Yarncroc at 2 for 4 years is a bit better of a deal for us. And we're actually at the max for defense. So if we see any really good defense we want, we have to move somebody. Zajac, kind of expensive. Um, I'm wondering if there's anybody. Corey Schneider's available. $6 million. I think I made a potential low elite. He could bounce back for us. So I don't know if goalies are actually Schneider and Kincaid reunited. Campbell's our AHL guy. That's not a terrible pick, I don't think. If he, if our team plays well in front of him, I think he does, you know, potentially turn to a good goalie again. Broussard, 82, 1.2 million. Great pick for us there. Next up, the New York Rangers, Chris Kreider, Buchnevich. They have a lot of guys available. Buchnevich, I think, because he's young. Decent, uh, decent contract there. Really nice pick. Honestly, our team's looking pretty good, and I think all we can take right now is forwards. So, Pajot, 26.79. It's okay. Um, Nielsen's not really great anyways. I guess we go Pajot here. He's not the greatest pick on Ottawa, but definitely could be worse. So, so far, like I said, team's looking good. Pitlick, Lawton, I think Lawton's going to be the pick here. Sam Morin, we can't take. He's already 23. He's kind of messed. So, yeah, we'll take Lawton there. Pittsburgh Penguins, what do we have? Hornfist, a bit expensive, but... I mean, he gives us a player. We need some guys to build this team around. Sharks here. All right, I was going to say, if, like, Burns maybe was there because Giordano was available on Calgary, that would be insane. But they protected uh, Burns, Carlson, and Vlasic. Dylan, 82, 3.2. We can't take, actually. So Melker Carlson. Honestly, the Sharks don't have a lot available here for us. Goudreau, 26, 78, making 925K. He's probably the player to take. Again, he's the guy that could play in the AHL if we need him to. Perron, 80 for overall. Vince Dunn's pretty solid. Ah, uh, I honestly might go and uh, get rid of a defenseman to get Vince Dunn. 22 years old, 82 overall, and making only 100 k It's a very solid defenseman. All right, guys, so I'm actually going to go back and take comfort here from Colorado. Three and a half million for five years, 24.79. Hopefully, it can grow to like a low 80, in which case, turns into a solid third line center for us. And then next here, we take Dunn, because I think he's too young and too like high rated already to pass on. Tampa Bay, McDonough. Oh no, we have to get another defenseman then, because we have to take McDonough here. So obviously, they protect Hedman, they protect Sergeyev. How are they not protecting McDonough? Like, what? I don't quite understand what is going on here. Like, who would they protect over McDonough? They must think they need that cap space or something. So Jake McCabe on Buffalo, guys, isn't really that great. Instead, we'll take Jimmy Vc there. as another solid forward can play in our middle six. Obviously, we take Ryan McDonough, so... Him and Giordano's our top D pair, which is unreal. Like, this team's on insane right now. Jake Muzzin's available, but oh, Jake Muzzin's, he's one year away from UFA. Kapanen and Janssen, though. As you guys can see, they actually boosted Janssen to an 82. Hyman, Dermot's available. Um, Dermot's 2281, medium top four. Toronto has so much available here. Like, I feel like they're not protecting enough, or somehow there's something messed up, and they're protecting, like, guys are not supposed to be protecting i don't know this is a tough one all right guys so i thought about it and i'm going with Janssen here simply because 82 overall medium top six 3.4 for the next five years he can easily get to like an 84 at which point that's an insane contract he's locked in Dermot will need a raise and we already have so many good defensemen uh we're not probably gonna need him where Janssen could honestly be a first liner for us tanner pearson there not bad josh levo's okay just because he's cheap Honestly, Levo might be the play. Tanner, we don't really want Pearson's contract. Yeah, we'll take Josh Levo there. Actually, there's no way Demko would be available, right? Markstrom. Markstrom's really good. I think the play would actually be take Markstrom. We'll have to get rid of a goalie, though. So we're taking Markstrom, guys. We don't need Schneider to be our starter. And if he's our backup, he's not going to grow. We have to take a forward now from the Devils. Might as well just take Hayden here, an AHL guy. But again, we had to take some AHL guys anyways. So, I think I skipped over Vancouver there. Um, on, ooh, Jensen we can't take though. Panic. Leipzig, 25.79, just a cheap guy. I'm going to take Leipzig. I think that's the pick. And like I was saying, for Vancouver, we're going to go take Markstrom. Obviously, they had to protect Demko, elite potential. We get Markstrom. So, have our starting goaltender. Kim Cavalier backing him up. And then we have Campbell in the AHL if we need to have somebody. Let's see, what's Winnipeg got on the block? Perot, Lowry. 
If you guys didn't know, he's actually got sick face-offs now. 94, so he's a great third or fourth line center. Um, Cop there's a couple years younger. One overall below, same potential. Ooh, um, that's tough. I think Lowry, though, Cop could turn into the better player. Lowry with those face-offs, his physical stat, I feel like he's just a better bomb six player. So I'm just going to go Lowry here. I think this is a playoff team that we just got off the expansion draft, so it's pretty unreal. So right there, guys, they look at our expansion draft team. I mean, go through the names. That is pretty insane. Again, we should be a playoff team. We can make a couple nice trades here as well. I could see us maybe even competing for the Stanley Cup very first year. Look at that, guys. Giordano, 74 points in 78 games last year, and the Flames don't protect him. I can't believe that. Also, as you can see there, team status. Somehow we're a builder. I feel like our team's better than that, but I want to show you guys, you definitely do want to add the contract here if you're in the expansion draft, as it makes it real that way. Carlo here, we're going to add extension to this summer. Also, I was thinking about it, it actually works out really well with all the RFA still unsigned. Toronto has to sign Marna this summer. Winnipeg's going to have to sign both Connor and Line. And we just started regular franchise mode. I think it automatically gives them a one-year 900k deal, which really isn't the best. And actually, speaking of Tampa Bay and some other teams, I got to know, like, which defenseman they protected. Heaven search of, I guess they protected Shankirk over McDonough. Fair enough. So before the draft starts, guys, taking a look at the draft class. We got three medium elites going in the top five. We're picking number five, remember. So hopefully somebody messes up, takes Sergeyev or Sergeyev there at three. And we can maybe trade up and get Zaitsev, who's medium elite. Because after that, no one's a sure thing. Again, this draft's usually pretty bad because it's like only created players and leftover players that didn't get drafted so honestly it might even be smart for us to trade some picks but we still can only make five trades so we gotta make sure it's worth it for us i'm thinking we'll sim the first two picks here 74 overall medium elite guy's name is bang let's see 66 medium elite it's really not that great we're gonna try and trade up here with detroit though so actually you guys had a better idea instead i just let detroit make their pick and as you can see they did take the elite guy uh medium top four defense in there went to la and I'm thinking we'll actually put our trade on the block, use that new trade finder feature, and see if potentially we can get something good back for it. I think I clicked the wrong thing there, so I'm going to click find trade, put our first rounder up for grabs, because I think our team's good enough, and this draft's really not that great. Add asset, let's look for something out there. Now, this counts as a team offering us a trade, I just realized, finding trade. So this is kind of a way around our five trade maximum. Crawford, DeHaan, a fourth and a fourth. It's a lot of cap space there. Keith, DeHaan, Nyquist, Savard. Again, a lot of cap space. We're getting a good player back in Nyquist, even Savard. Green to Kaiser, Stahl in a fourth. Could have taken Stahl for free from Minnesota. Actually, who did we take instead? We took Spurge and Younger. Letty Grice, third, fourth. Eberly, Bailey, that's pretty good value with Grice, a third and a fourth. Um, okay, Lee, eight years, seven million. I think he's 85, so it's probably a bit of a cap dump. Pacioretty. Also a bit of a cap dump, McNabb. McNabb and Smith. Smith's pretty good. Stastny. Okay, so we had some really good offers here. I think Bailey's the best rated and like most reasonable cap hit. So you know what, guys? I think I'm going to accept the Bailey offer. Grice will probably try and flip third and fourth. And I'm pretty sure the same rating as Lee, but making Tim Lee less. And we get an extra fourth round pick there. So seems like a bit of a no-brainer for us, especially since we know. I, well, we don't know what elite players are out there. So rather than waste the pick get some good players back. So around the second round here, guys, as you can see, a couple goalies just got taken. Ottawa, they actually got a medium starter. And with our pick, the Islanders got a medium top six. Looked through the first round. There was no other elites taken. So I really like the trade we made, but we only have 30 players. Might as well try and get some prospects here. This goalie, Sadika, do we go three goalies in a row? 50-50, medium elite. Next highest ranked guy. I feel like we might as well go for it. And medium fringe. Uh, wasn't a great pick. And look at this, guys. Colorado there took a defenseman, medium top four, with their third round pick. I feel like for us, we weren't even able to scout, though, so I'm not sure if we got screwed that way. Right there, you can see a couple stars, scout recommendations. I feel like I might as well go for the one that might be medium elite, although I know he's not because he's got the face, so we'll go with the American Houston instead. Low bottom six. Hasn't been a great draft for us. What is that little scanner icon on the top left? I actually have no idea. I wonder if that just means... Like, they're making the pick. And, yeah, like I said, this draft's usually not the greatest. It's, like, leftover slash created players. Moser here might be elite. Let's let's go for it. Medium top six. Fourth round. Can't complain. 
Again, we have literally no young players because the expansion draft, obviously the first three years, they are exempt. So that's why after we trade away the first round pick, we wanted to take some chances. This dude, 50-50 medium lead. Let's just go for him now in case someone else takes him. Medium seven. So our scouts haven't been doing great here in the first year. Might have to go get some new scouts. Sixth round. Can we find a time in the rough? So far, it's not looking good for us. This guy might be medium elite. Might as well do it. Medium bomb six. So we're getting bodies, unfortunately. They're not very great players. Lastly here, seventh round pick. Be our best player. The Swedish guy. Our scout likes him. Please, come through. Medium seventh. That might have been my worst ever draft. Luckily, it was like an extra draft, so it doesn't hurt us too much. I know the resign phase here, guys. Obviously, pretty much everyone is under contract, I think, except for Brandon Carlo, because in real life, he's the only one without a contract right now. And as you can see, I actually did boost him up one. Someone said he should not be the same rating as Yoki Haruju, and I agreed, so gave him a bit of a boost there. He wants 4.4. I did hear, like, the contract's a lot more realistic now. You don't have Eric Carlson asking for $6 million in free agency. Um, I think for us... A little bit like what one year two year let's do a two year as we don't we don't have a lot of cap space right now i think we have like 10 million which is okay but i like that bridge deal on him a lot more especially because we have so many defensemen i'm curious too to see what's even going to be out there in free agency there should be like nothing i'm thinking they'll have patty marlowe justin williams and that's about it so we'll take a look right now i have a feeling there's really gonna be nothing to get which is why only having the 10 million is not too big of a deal. And right here, guys, just talking about the exempt players where it doesn't count towards your 50 players. But it does say if you go over, they'll be removed from your team, which I'm not sure how you could even go over. Usually, they'll just say you're, you know, you're at the max contracts. So, yeah, not a lot here. Justin Williams, Ben Hutton, Patty Marlowe, just all the guys that are actually current free agents and have not been signed yet, which this is really cool to see because in the last games, you would have guys who are going to be free agents next year. So, definitely make sure you do the add contract year option when you're setting up the settings. Ben Hutton, I feel, is worth it. We have a lot of defensemen, but we get him for free, maybe trade a couple others. I think he's a good bottom pair guy, he's still young-ish. Offer him 2.35. We aren't gonna go crazy or anything trying to sign him. Other than that, Mr. Game 7, I don't know. I feel like we're gonna trade a couple defensemen here, could probably bring in some more forwards. Goaltending, Johnson, Darling, Lack, those are the best guys. Potential-wise, Fukali, like we do only have 32 contracts, so might as well try and sign some AHL players here. Some people just can just kind of help us out. Do the same thing for forwards. I'm wondering if there's anyone decent available. So because we have so many contract spots, guys, being a brand new team, we need some younger players. Decided to go and offer a bunch of AHL contracts, essentially. These are all two-way guys. I believe they're all under 23 years old, and they all have either medium top nine potential as a forward or medium top six as a defenseman. I think I offered like 10 or 12, so we'll still have a ton of roster spots. Hopefully, all those guys say yes, they'll just give us some more assets to work with. Also, too, you're going to wait and see what Ben Hutton says. If he does say yes, we definitely have to trade at least a defense or two for a forward. Spencer Watson there, Gagne, Tamala, Kammerer, Johansson, Sajin. Setcov rejected. I think he was an RFA, so that's fine. Bernhardt as well. Nima Linen. So I think we got most of them. And like I was saying, we do need to get a centerman. So we have a lot of forwards, but they're almost all wings. Ben Hutton did say yes. That's good to see. Just give us some more options. So we'll see what's out there on the trading block. Hopefully, you can find a couple forwards for this team. So like I was saying, guys, we need a center. And surprisingly enough, Minnesota has stall in the block. We could have taken the expansion draft. I think we took Spurgeon instead. 85 overall. He's the highest rated center that's on the block. And actually, he wouldn't be too bad as a first liner. Offering up Larson. We have so many defensemen. He's expendable. Along with a couple third round picks there. We'll see what Minnesota says. Trades rejected. I felt like that was a pretty fair offer. I don't know, like we could maybe add something small. I think they wanted Jack Campbell. Right now he's like our AHL starter. I don't really, we don't really need him too much. Add Campbell, let's see what they say. Trades accepted, there we go. And next you guys are trying to get another center. Surprisingly, Colorado has Kotri on the block. They give up Tyson Berry and Kerfit for him. No idea why he's on the block. He's like their second line center. We took comfort from them. Offering up Dunn, who's pretty solid, but we have a bunch of defensemen. Hayden Fleury actually right now is not in our top six and they want him to be, so willing to trade Dunn here. Scott Lawton, I don't even think he makes our top 12 forwards. Second round pick this year's draft, it's pretty even. We'll see what they say. Trades rejected. I feel like we're pretty close. And you know what? Colorado doesn't have a good backup goalie. We have Markstrom and Grice. We could throw in Kincaid there and wouldn't really hurt us at all. Maybe now they'll do the trade. And there he goes. Each time we just had to throw in a goalie, just got our first and second line center. So 
Team's looking pretty good. And next year, guys, we're going to trade with Columbus for Night Fist. Some reason he's on the block. Solid player, 84 overall, making 5.5 for the next four years. VC here is like a fourth liner for us, so if I'm able to give him up, especially Knife is coming back. Hud, nice sign, but our defense is honestly too good, and I want Hayden Fleury to be in the NHL, which he kind of would be competing with Hutton's spot. The second round pick there, 2022, this prospect is okay, 2165, low top nine. The value's on our side, Knife is on the block. I feel like this should go through, and trade's accepted, so there we go. I feel like we're done now for the offseason. We have a pretty good team. As you can see in the bottom corner, status is contender. I feel like we got a really good shot at the playoffs. And check this out, guys. After trading for two centers and stalling Kadri, Florida just offered us a first and a fourth for Broussard and a third. Broussard obviously on a very good contract, 1.2 million. So they can have Pajot in the AHL, and he's only 79 overall, a couple below Broussard. Might as well get a first round pick here. We are also dropping down from a third to a fourth, but it's pretty much a free first round pick. And Nashville just traded for Chris Kreider. Give up a first round pick, geez. And Pittsburgh just got Thomas Hickey there for Poolin, so give up a pretty good prospect for him. I do like how now you see when trades go down. Definitely one of the new cooler features in franchise. Brodziak in a fourth for two fourths. We have, like, our team's set. We have extra players we need to trade for picks and prospects, not the other way around. Kruger, don't want him. So at the start of the season now, guys, before I show you the lines, I first want to show you our coaching staff. I actually feel like we have pretty good staff here. It's not going to make any changes. Head coach is Fontaine. Morale there is happy. I want to show you guys. It's actually pretty good. A minus offense, A defense, A minus penalty kill. Also, too, as you can see, team fit 66%. McDonough is perfect. Nike fit is perfect. A lot of guys there fit into his roster quite well. Also, too, he's rolling four lines for forwards and all D pairs, which makes sense because we have a pretty balanced team. Other than our top D pair of Giordano and McDonough, really no superstars. It makes sense to kind of play everyone equally. Also, too, I just noticed his coaching style is physical, which I think actually matches up with us pretty good. We've got Adam Lowry in the bottom six, a lot of other guys that can, you know, throw the body around. So, hopefully, He's a good go coach for us. Obviously, time will tell. So here, guys, a look at the lines. Again, we should be a playoff team. Josh Bailey, Eric Stahl, Augusta Nyquist is our first line. They're actually getting plus one there for chemistry. Kasia, Kadri, and Janssen on the second line. Third line there is Bucinovich, Lowry, and Hornqvist. And fourth is Yarncroc, Comfort, and Leipzig. So again, pretty solid forward group. Defense here, Giordano McDonough. I get a plus three there on the top pair. Pretty ridiculous. So that means that we're playing with a 92 and a 90 as our top D pair. Not bad at all. Spurgeon, Gustin on the second pair, then Flurry, Carlo on the bottom pair. They're getting a plus one. Goaltending, of course, we got Markstrom as our starter. Grice as the backup. Looking at the power play here, that actually has chemistry as well. Power play unit one and two, both getting a plus one. Both power play units are actually pretty solid as well. Penalty kill, our second unit, Kadri, Kemper, Spurgeon, Carlo, plus three. So when that unit's out there, they're going you know, to be playing even better, hopefully. So overall, I really like and look at this group. We should be a playoff team. I've said that how many times now? AHL team's also pretty solid. You got Ernie in there, Pajot, Goudreau, Guryanov, Charche, and Kraus actually get a plus three. Entire AHL actually is plus one or better, so looking pretty good. Spencer Watson there is playing center. 78 face-offs. We should actually change him to a center. I'll make sure I do that after this. Carlson, Bergman on the top pair. AHLD could be a little better. Goaltending there, Fucali is a starter. I actually signed Miska to be the backup. I noticed we didn't have an AHL backup after trading Kincaid and Campbell, so... Overall, like and look of both these teams. Again, pretty optimistic here for an expansion team. Also want to show you guys the captaincy. You can probably already guess who's wearing the letters on this team. But Stahl there is one alternate. We have Giordano as the captain. I believe he's the oldest player. McDonough is the other alternate. Again, I'm hoping for big things from that top D pair, especially with that huge chemistry boost. And we'll see here what the actual team ratings are. Probably pretty good. 89 offense, 92 defense, 85 goaltending. And right there, of course, the away jersey, which honestly it doesn't look as bad as I thought it would there. And then right there is a look at the home jersey. Curious to see which one you guys think is better. But we'll get started with the Sim now. Hopefully, like I said, can make the playoffs. And if we do, anything can happen. Maybe even win the Stanley Cup in our first year. And check this out, guys. Trade deadline's about a month away. And Corey Crawford just got traded to the Calgary Flames for two second round picks. They do need a goalie, so that makes a lot of sense. Right now, you can see we're 24, 19, and 5. I noticed, too, one really cool thing. Because of the color of the T that's behind the fish logo, you actually can't really see it in franchise. That worked out really well. Obviously, we're not Toledo. We don't really want the T behind us. So you just see the sockeye there, I guess we'll call it, which I thought was really cool. So again, we got about three weeks here till the deadline. Pretty good record. I was hoping for a bit better, but should be fighting for a playoff spot. And we just got a pretty big trade-off here, guys. Miku Koivu, a third, Hunt, and a fifth for a first and a second. Thing is... In case we don't make the playoffs, I'd like to keep that first round pick. Having two firsts in this first draft would be huge. Holy shit, boys. Look at this. The Islanders just traded Matt Barzell, third round pick, and Kunakel to the Islanders for Nikas and a first. I don't get that one. Like, Barzell is essentially Nikas, but further along. They also get a first round pick, but 
That is an absolute steal by the Hurricanes. That, that's nuts. I wish we got another big trade here, guys. St. Louis traded Braden Shen a fourth to Arizona for Jarmelson in a third. Do not get this one from St. Louis perspective. I know Shen is on an expiring deal, so maybe they didn't think he could, they could resign him, but I don't know. Shen's a lot better of a player. Jarmelson is still 85 overall. I did forget to lower him a bit to like 83 or 84. Same with Liljegren, I think still elite. I should have made him a medium top four. There was so much to do. Forgot, obviously, a couple things. This trade here looks just like a lot. Minnesota gets a first for leak. A couple guys there for Koivu, Brown, Hunt, and Paterne. Surprised they got a first for Koivu. But it looks like just a lot of extra players aside from him. Really cool though now to see these trades popping up. I actually only have it turned on to stars only. Which is really good. I feel like otherwise you'd see way too many trades. Another one. Edmondson, Steen, versus Stieg for Hamnick and Cernick. St. Louis is definitely busy here trying to repeat. So we're about three days away from the deadline. We can still make two more trades here. 31, 24, and 6. We should be in a good position. A second Delzato and Weidman for Merrill Eakland. I really wouldn't call that one a star, like, you know, star trade, but maybe just because there was so much involved. So at the deadline, guys, 32, 24, and 7. 71 points. We're a pretty good spot. HL team there also has a very good record. So we'll see where we are in the division. Fourth there, holding on to a wild card spot. And Kadri, 51 points in 63 games, playing very well as our second line center. Gold Knights right behind us. We're also right behind the Canucks. The early, surprisingly, 83 points. They're just crushing it. So hopefully we can uh, hold on to this playoff spot again. We can make two trades. We'll see what's on the block. So I just used fine trade on Pajot, guys, since he's playing in the AHL. Expiring deal. We're not going to re-sign him. And St. Louis here offering us a third and a sixth. We're saying yes to that for sure. All right, guys. So we're going to try to get blockbuster trade with the Montreal Canadiens for Max Domi, who they have on the block. One year left. 86 overall. Roll there, first line forward. He's a center, man. You can also play him on the wing. 77 face-offs. What does he got there? Um, 53 points in 63 games. To Foley as well. They must have traded for at 50%. Have him on the block. He'd be a nice addition to the forward group. Get a second round pick back as we're actually giving them a first round pick. That's Florida's pick. Eric Gustafson there. 84 overall. He's only been okay this year. 21 points. And he's making 1.2 million. Gonna want a big raise. Nike Fist, essentially, kind of Domi's taking over for. So we have to give up somebody. Another thing I want to actually point out to you guys that's really cool is during the season, players' trade values will actually depend on how they're playing. So, for instance, Carter's our leading scorer. His value has gone up a little bit, where a guy like Andreas Janssen, I don't think, is having the best year. I can't even find him, as you can see. 25, 82, medium top six. Should have more value than this, but he's averaging a point every three games. Also, too, I think I noticed with time on ice, it's actually gone up. It's a lot more realistic. So our top pairing guys, you can see McDonough, 26 minutes a night. Same with Giordano. First line guys like Kadri there, 19 minutes. Eric Stahl, 20 minutes. So some really you know nice additions I've been seeing in franchise. Anyways, let's see here. This trade, everything they want on our side, they want to give up on their side. Pretty much even. And Domi, we can't get a player his age, his rating without him making a trade. So see what the Canadians say. Trades rejected. Honestly, I thought that was a pretty good deal. I mean, we could take off the second on their side and make it a third. At that point, though, it's just... Not quite as good a deal for us, although Max Domi might be worth it. Let's see if we'll do like a third and a seventh. Just, you know, give us that extra pick. And there we go. We're calling up Carlson. Hopefully that trade works out. And next year, guys, I actually use fine trade on Patrick Horingfist. He's making 5.3 for the next four years. And he's an okay player, 83 overall, but I like to use that cap space to kind of re-sign our guys, maybe in free agency. So I've got four offers here. And I think the best one's Columbus, Tarasov, medium starter, potential goalie, and a third round pick. Ottawa's here too with Duclair's not bad. Berwicky though I really don't want and we don't need the extra forwards. I already have so many in the AHL. I'm thinking too, fine trade, maybe it should count as a trade because it's really not an offer that's being sent to us by the computer on their own. We're kind of, you know, the one finding the trade. So I guess the first year will be a write-off because it's a new thing, but I think from here on out, fine trade will count as a trade. Tarasov, 6'5 as well, medium starter. So I really like this deal for us. We actually have an extra forward. And kind of getting ahead here according to his contract in case he ends up being not too good down the road. He's 33, could start to regress. I think it's a smart move for us. This isn't good, guys. So I just went to change Max Domi from a center to a wing, and I noticed he's got extended salary there, $8.5 million for the next three years. I didn't realize that. So that's a lot more than I was hoping to pay him. I was thinking it'd give me like $6 million. An extra two and a half there. Hopefully, you know, he plays well and continues to grow. Also, if you guys are wondering, there's what Max Domi looks like as a member of the Seattle Sock guys. Pretty cool. So after the trade deadline, guys, here's an update look at the team. We got Domi, Stalin, Toffoli on the first line. Kasha, Kadri, and Bailey on the second. Bushnovich, Lowry, and Janssen on the third. With Yarncroft, Comfort, and Leipzig on the fourth. 
defense here, Giordano McDonough, Spurgeon Flurry, Carlson Carlo. Carlson Carlo actually get a plus three. Flurry's now playing top four, which is his role, low lead potential, hoping he can grow a ton. Goalies there, I don't think have changed at all. Special teams, pretty much the same. Don't really have any big uh, special team boosts aside from that second penalty kill. So overall, I'm liking the look of this team. I feel like we got better, we got younger. We did lose Hornfist, obviously, but that shed some cap space. So I think we can keep making ourselves a better team in the summer. HL team there as well, still looking really good. So we'll keep simulating here the last month and a half. Hopefully, we can hold on to a playoff spot. And then, of course, anything can happen. And the regular season just ended, guys. We have a record of 44, 31, and 7. So 95 points. We should be in the playoffs. HL team there is also very solid. We actually played really good after the deadline. And look at that. Second in the division. Only the Oilers, 107 points. McDavid must have went off. Domi there, 68 points. Again, he's got to grow from the 86, at least 87, hopefully even 88, to kind of justify that big contract, which I, I wish, I don't know if i make that trade if I knew he was getting paid that. Kadri 60 is good, Bailey 57, Stahl there to Foley. We have a really kind of good committee of players. Lowry 46, 80 overall third line center. I think he could grow maybe. That's a pretty solid season for him. Cash, that's not too bad. McDonough, Spurgeon. So overall, everyone, I mean, Janssen, 35 is kind of what he usually puts up. Buchnevich, 35. Really no one kind of sucked, I guess you'd say. Everyone played pretty well. Curious here, how the goalies do? They're actually both on penning deals. Markstrom, point not exact save, save percentage. Goals against, a little bit better for Grice. Again, both these guys, we could let go if there's a better goalie available. I'm actually not sure uh, what free agent goalies will be out there. So we'll definitely have to kind of take a look and figure out who might be available. AHL team real quick. Goodrow, 60. Ernie, 58. Kraus, Hayden. So maybe some growth from the AHL. Those guys will make the team next year. I'm thinking it'll be McDavid leading the league, and it is 105 points. Ovechkin only one behind, 59 goals. Crosby 103, Dreisaitl 102, McKinnon 101. So five guys, all 100 plus points. You can make an argument that's like the five best players in the league. I think Dreisaitl is probably not in there, but the other four, you could say the four best players: Sagan, Peterson, Kuznetsov. Pearson's an 88 now. I mean, he put up almost 100 points. So Landis Cog almost 90, or had 90 points. Love Larkin there having 88 points. That's great to see. So pretty cool having like, you know, we didn't even touch the settings in terms of scoring and stuff. Five guys, 100 plus points. Again, they definitely fixed that this year. Can't believe though Edmonton did as good as they did. Entire league, Tampa, 118 points. They're still a force. Toronto there, 113. You got Edmonton, Boston. So we finished eighth in the league there, which I think is pretty solid. 95 points. Take a look here and see who finished last in the entire league. Chicago squeaks in with the 17th spot. And last in the league is the Ottawa Senators, 73 points. Kind of what you expect. And one team I actually didn't notice. Right, you know what? It doesn't even matter. I was going to see if Florida made the playoffs, but we traded their pick. And yeah, they did make the playoffs, but just wanted to make sure there. And the first round of the playoffs, guys, we're up against the San Jose Sharks. As you can see here, they got Hurdle, Couture, and Kane on their first line. Meyer, Thornton, and Sorensen on the second. LeBanc, Brodzinski, and Rattle on the third. Brower, Sumla, and Nosen on the fourth. So they definitely have lost some forward depth. Defense, though, Carlson Burns on the top pair is pretty nasty. Dylan Vlasic, Schlemko, and Heed in goal for them. They still have Martin Jones there, Dell backing him up. So pretty much no changes, I think, aside from maybe adding a couple forwards for the San Jose Sharks. I think, too, they obviously have better defensemen than us, but ours are pretty close, I think, our top pair of Giordano McDonough. Forwards, they have better high-end forwards, but we have more depth. So I think anything can happen here. I think goaltending as well is pretty even at home. We lose both games, 4-1 loss and a 5-4 OT loss. Hopefully we can at least win a game here in our first playoff series. Okay, maybe that's asking for too much. Fourth game, please don't get swept here. I'm sure Shark eating a sockeye or whatever is going to be a meme. Come on. And we lose 8-1. Not a great uh, first playoff appearance. Check this out, guys. Lottery results are in. Ottawa, they're picking first overall. So although they lost the fourth pick last year, which was Bowen Byram, I guess a little bit of retribution here. They get Alexis Lafreniere, who's from Montreal, or at least Quebec, so lives near Ottawa. New Jersey again, 6th to 2nd there. Colorado, they got the 4th pick from Ottawa last year. They go from 11th to 3rd, and St. Louis actually, I didn't even realize that. Did St. Louis finish, no, Ottawa finished last in the league. How did St. Louis have the best odds? St. Louis must have dropped below Ottawa after we checked the standings, so that's kind of crazy. The Stanley Cup winner. Ended up being last in the league, probably why they trade away Shen and a bunch of other players. So, kind of crazy. You got Ottawa first, New Jersey again up there, Colorado again jumping up, the Stanley Cup winner. Pretty uh, pretty crazy year here for the first season in Seattle. Also, too, we actually lost the Stanley Cup winner, San Jose Sharks. 
I didn't think they had the forward depth to do it, but I guess when you get led by Carlson, you get led by Burns, it's going to happen for you. So Sharks swept us, beat the Oilers in seven, Wild in five, and the Maple Leafs actually in seven. Maple Leafs there finally get by the Bruins in the first round, Sabres in the second round, Florida there they sweep, and Tampa Bay actually lost to Buffalo best of seven in the first round in the East. Kind of surprising. AHL team, I don't think we did anything. Yeah, our AHL team also got swept, so um, that's not good. Basically, we didn't win a single playoff game between two teams making the playoffs. You don't like to see that ever. President's Trophy, Tampa Bay. We already know all the team awards, individual awards here. McDavid gets the Art Ross, as well as the Hart Trophy. Cor Tory Krug, James Norris, that's kind of surprising. McKinnon, Lady Bing. Zadina gets the Calder, I love seeing that. Hurdle Con Smythe, Anderson Vesna. Rast, though, with William Jennings. Coburn there, Bill Masterton. Weaver there. I thought for a second it was our coach because he looks the exact same, but Canucks coach against the Jack Adams. I'm still not sure how they decide this one, especially in the first year. O'Reilly, Selkie again, and McDavid, Ted Lindsay, and of course we know Ovi with the Maurice Richard. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's a good year for us. Like we made the playoffs and we have a young team, so we should just keep getting better. Just curious if we won any AHL awards, but it's not looking like it. All right, so. We have a good shot here to, you know, get better in the draft. Hopefully find some diamonds in the rough this time around. Of course, use those for trades, whatever as well. We'll have some money, I think, in free agency. Still pretty optimistic about this team. And after that, guys, you can actually conduct draft day interviews, which I think is pretty sick. I'll probably just do one here as an example. I don't want to do too many here and kind of waste your guys' time. But I did notice that there's actually some sick players that are going to be going later in the draft. Guaranteed medium elite. Um, that guy there, probably don't really believe in him. There's very, very low chance, but... Per Larson here, guaranteed medium elite, Central Scouting 89. Lander there probably is, right there he's ranked 84, so I guess we'll give him an interview, just kind of see, is he really that elite? Because he's a gem, I think, and three out of four there, so let's just see. Skills, play style, personality. I'm just gonna ask him about skills. He said he's more of a skill player than physical. I mean, I don't mind that at all. Tell us what's the strength, has a good shot. I mean, obviously that's how you score. New topic, we have one question left do uh, personality. What's his, can you tell us about his personality here? I'd love to chat about what type of person I am. Okay, <laughs> tell us what type of person you are. He's a professional, all right. So that's kind of the draft interview there. I'm thinking like, even though we're just talking, it'll probably actually give us like more actual, accurate like information on him. So right there you can see personality types, strengths, weaknesses, and hopefully that translates to actually more info in the draft. He's still three out of four for the potential, so. I don't know, we can do two more interviews, I'll just do them off screen. Again, just kind of want to show you guys what that new system's like. And right here guys, making Winnipeg a huge offer for their 8th overall pick. I want to try and draft Cole Perfetti, in last year's game he was sick, hoping it's the same this year. So 22nd overall in this year's draft, and our first round pick in 2022. Also taking back a third to try and get one of those medium elite guys we know are going to go in the third round. They'll actually give us two third round picks, so it could work out really well for us. I hate, okay, so LaPierre there goes second. Behind Lafreniere, that's kind of surprising. All right, guys, we're making this offer now. See what they say. And trades rejected. Two firsts. Wow. I thought for sure that would go through. All right, guys, I'm also adding two fourth round picks this year to try and trade up and get that eighth overall, get Cole Perfetti. They're still saying no. That is insane to me. We can't give up the thirds this year because we need those medium elite guys. Um, I mean, they're pretty much equal. We'll give them our fourth this year. St. Louis didn't do very very well. Do Columbus third next year. Come on. Trades accepted. Cole Perfetti, he better be sick. He also better be there. I can't believe Hendrick LaPierre went second. Mason Ray or sorry, Lucas Raymond dropped all the way to seventh. 77 overall medium elite. Eminger. Holtz there at five. Drysdale at four. Sokolov, I think he's made up there. Goes three. So Devils kind of messed up there with LaPierre. He's a good player, 61 overall medium elite, but aside from Lafreniere, like I don't know, Holtz there, Raymond, both 77s. We do get our guy, we get Cole Perfetti. I think also Lundell's going to be available. Quentin Byfield's even available. Okay, this is actually a bit of a tough spot. I did this to get Perfetti. I think Byfield, though, is the better player here. I'm He's like 74 overall. I don't know, how did he do? 16 goals, 56 assists. He did better than Perfetti. I can't believe Byfield's dropping to number 8. We got to take him. I want Perfetti, but it's got to be Byfield. 74 overall. <sighs> if Perfetti ends up being the better of the two, I'm actually going to be so mad because that's who we we're going for. 72. Okay, so Byfield was the pick. Then Lundell there goes 10. I can't believe how much those guys dropped. I mean, 
I guess because there were some made up players, but still Byfield Lapierre went way too high there at second. That's kind of crazy to see. So next pick here, guys, is in the third round. I'm hoping um, one of those two meme elite guys are available for us. So uh, almost guaranteed low top four. I feel like they gotta be available. Please, please, please. Okay, so the guaranteed one here, and then the one that's probably gonna be there, we'll take with the pick after. Or actually, Central Scouting has him ranked a bit higher, but we gotta take the one that's a guaranteed first. Don't wanna risk it. And what is he? 59 medium elite. So not the highest rated, but definitely a really good trade bait. Our next pick here is pick number seven in the third round. So actually we had two early third round picks. Hopefully the other guy there is also medium elite. So here we go, Mikel Lander. Please, you're a gem. He is medium elite, 51 overall, but we'll take it. So three medium elites there in the first, with our first three picks. Definitely doing a lot better than that last draft. Last draft wasn't good at all. Guaranteed low top six, it's not too bad, I guess. 105th overall. I'm thinking we might take a chance on a goalie, but looking at the rankings there, we can definitely wait. Our next pick here, guys, number 126th overall. I'm going to take Logan Morrison. I actually know for a fact he's low top six because I boosted him up a little bit. Uh, he's supposed to go, I think, in the second round right now, maybe early third round of 2020. So fifth round here, we'll probably go and take a chance on one of those goalies now. Garen there is guaranteed backup, but might as well take a shot on one of these three, or I guess two who might be medium elite. Uh, we'll go with the Swede first, I guess. Probably take the Russian with the next one. Medium fringe starter. For the fifth round, that's honestly not too bad anyways. And then hopefully the other one's available. And then maybe even that defenseman. I feel like basing it off of... Ooh, Fedorov. I like the name. Low elite. 182. Is the Russian goalie... The Russian goalie's actually gone. This Swedish defenseman, though, is still here. We can get him probably with our next pick. Take Fedorov. Low top four. That's pretty good for sixth rounder. So even though our scouts wants to take this pro cop guy who probably is a low top four. We're going to take a chance on this Swedish defenseman. 50-50 medium elite. And he's a medium 7th D. Maybe we should listen to the scouts, but I'm not too worried about it because I'm pretty sure that guy is not uh, def low top four. Medium top six. We'll give the scouts another chance here. I believe this is our last pick in the draft. Medium bottom six. I mean, end of the draft definitely could be worse. So... Those three top picks definitely give us some awesome trade bait now. So we're at the resign phase here. We have almost 25 million in cap space. Mark Giordano's now a 90. He's actually gone up by one at his old age. McDonough's also gone up by one. Domi has not, and we're paying him quite a bit. Hopefully he'll have a big year for us, though. So Spurgeon wants to stay. 30 years old, 84 overall. Five and a half. It's not too bad of an ask. Defoli also wants to stay. He's 83. 4.6 also seems pretty fair. It just, you know, whether or not Janssen at 81, that really sucks to see. Cash also dropped. Flurry didn't, Flurry did go up, and then I guess he went back down. One year, I mean, let's see if we can get him for two years at 2.75. Assuming he grows, I think that's a really good contract. Leipzig, he's done growing after this. Honestly, I think we have enough forwards, we don't even need to bring Leipzig back, even if we, like, lose some guys to free agency. Especially, too, we got Ernie there, Grianov, yeah, like, they're all younger, they're gonna keep growing, so... Leipzig, I'm just going to let go. So Ernie here should be on our fourth line. Two years, 1.5 million. Seems like a pretty fair offer. Gryanov here, one year. All right, maybe he wants to try and prove he's, you know, worth a lot of money. We'll do 1.2 million. So just check to make sure, guys. We should be able to sign both Defoli and Spurgeon. Still have a lot of money for free agency. So we'll bring Defoli back. He actually had a really good last season. Spurgeon, I'm thinking, what do you want? 5.5, that's quite a bit. But without him, we then get pretty, like, you know, we have our top pair, Carlo, Fleury, Carlson. It really sucks Flurry kind of dropped. Carlson though could keep growing. Three years, two million. Two years, one point. I like that a lot better, obviously, for the cup of bust. Try like two years, 1.5. Especially if he continues to grow. Bergman, that's just an AHL guy. We'll qualify him. Obviously, all the AHL guys we just kind of qualify. Sign for under a mil. <sighs> Spurgeon then we probably have to bring back. Maybe 5.25. Right-handed, solid offensive defenseman. It's a bit of money, but again... It's more accurate now in franchise modes. That's what's going to cost us in free agency to get a player like him. Markstrom is want to come back. All right, then. Hopefully, there's a starter available. Grice, 34 years old, 83 overall. 2.5 is pretty cheap for a goalie, like a backup goalie that's as good as he is. But I think we could probably get somebody cheaper. If not, we'll just go after him. So basically, we have all that money now to get a goalie. Hopefully, there's one available. Payton Flurry accepts our offer. That's awesome. Same with Gryanov, Ernie. Howerluck, Toffoli, Spurgeon rejects. We'll bump it up like 150k. Carlson accepts, Miska. And there you go, guys. We offered Spurgeon literally an extra 100k, and he said yes. Also, one of the AHL guys there, I think, accepted his qualifying offer. So we should have around 10 or 11 million here to spend in free agency. 
Most of that is probably going to go on a goalie. I'm hoping Holpe's available. Um, two, I guess we can even make a trade. Falling scouts not renewed. Yeah, we don't really need him. So hopefully there's a big free agency. Curious to see who's here. 2020 free agent class. Taylor Hall could be here. He's not though. Alex Petrangelo is 90 overall, 9.6. Thing is, we have Jared Dana McDonough on the first pair, so we really don't need him. As one of those guys would then be on the second. Braden Shen, 7.6 for 86. I guess Domi's contract wasn't too bad. Thornton wants 6.8 as a 40-year-old. I feel like they're not really factoring in his age enough because he just signed for $2 million the year before. Broussard there wants a big upgrade. He was making like 1.2. Koivu, Tanev, Galchenyuk is an RFA. Same with Polak. Nurse he wants $5 million. So, again, the thing we wanted was a goalie. Please, Holpe. Kemper is the best one. Leonard's available, 87 overall. All right, so he's definitely who we're going after. 5.6. Come on, I think uh, we actually have a decent amount of money left over, so see if we can get Leonard here joining Seattle. We'll offer him 5.75 for an 87 overall goalie, only 20 years old. Let's make it 5.85 just to be sure. Hopefully he says yes to that. Also, we need a backup. I'm liking Malcolm Subban here as the backup option. He's still 26, so he's got one year left to grow. 81 overall, one of the cheaper guys. If he turns into an 82, it's a very good deal. We'll offer him exactly what he's asking for. Hopefully he comes to Seattle. So. After that, we'd actually still have a few million left over. Our defense is pretty much set. Like, Tanev, I don't really think he's worth the money. Schultz, Nurse is an RFA. Gustin wants 5 million. So it wasn't a bad trade since he ended up going to free agency anyway. And uh, we got Max Domi out of that. Chara there is actually a free agent. Forwards, maybe we could use a forward. Again, though, like all these guys. Spezza wants a lot of money. He must have had a good year on Toronto. Hoffman there is pretty cheap. 83 overall, $4 million, 30 years old. All right, guys, so I think Hoffman's the best forward here in terms of just rating and price, I guess, for what you're getting. Only wants a one-year deal as well, which is fine with me. We'll do 4.4 there for one year, see what he says. And check this out, guys. I just sorted two-way players by potential. Troy Terry, for some reason. I mean, we'll give him the max offer there. He only wants one year. I'm almost positive the Ducks match that, but if they don't, obviously, we get a really good player for free. Same goes for Timoshov. We'll give him the max again. No reason why the Leafs shouldn't uh, match this, but you never know. Also, guys, after Terry and Timoshov made some offers on two-way players, and I did notice there's not as many, you know, young, medium top nine forwards available. Guys that are 20, 21 years old, high 60s. They're all later 20s, so they haven't really grown much. So it's basically like, do you want to sign them as an AHL player? We, of course, have 20 roster spots. So we can even afford to sign these guys here that are 1957 low top nine just to give us some depth players in the AHL. Maybe one of them turns out, of course. We're getting them for free, so... Really can't complain. Actually, a lot of them, too, are just RFAs. We're also, also check goalies here. See if there's anyone decent. Connor Ingram. Um, we already have some goalies, but he's definitely worth signing just based on rating everything else. Hopefully, he'll say yes. And check this out, guys. The Winnipeg Jets just traded two first-round picks for Marco Rivlasic. One of them's a 2022 first-rounder. I wonder if it's ours. Arizona here wants to Foley for a second and a third. I'm going to say no to that. We literally just signed him. I feel like we need him on our forward group. Boston gave up a first round pick for Zach Smith and a fourth. It's a weird trade. Ingram, though, accepts our offer. Same with that defenseman there. I'll be in the AHL. Same with Nyberg, Johansson. Set cover Jack stays to Detroit. Neem Lining comes back. Fleischer there. Gilbert. Waiting to hear back from the actual, you know, NHL players. Come on. Droy Terry rejects our offer. I figured he would. Hoffman accepts. There we go. Hopefully, he'll be a good player in our top six. Walker accepts. Subban, we got our backup goalie. Wood accepts as of now. White Cloud rejects. That's all right. Dolphin there accepts Fitzgerald, a couple decent AHL centers. How would you say his name? Hal Jawak. Timoshov accepts as of now. Brisebois. Haven't heard back from Leonard either, but he's the big guy we need. He rejects, goes back to Ottawa. We should have offered him more money because we don't have a goalie now. Eric Stahl for a first and a second. I feel like he's a pretty good player. We kind of need to keep him. So now we probably have to trade for a goalie. We have a little under $5 million there in cap space. Petrangelo is still available, but again, just doesn't really make sense. As we have Giordano, we have McDonough. Um, Markstrom there, we could go and bring back. We have 4.85. I mean, we might as well try and bring Markstrom back. We'll give him max we can, see what he says. And obviously, guys, Toronto does match our offer to Timoshov. Like, there's no reason not to. Carolina also matches. I'm not sure why those guys, they, I mean, they just must have just, like, how did they even go to RFA? Toffoli again gets an offer. Like, I heard he rejected Arizona. Waiting to hear back from Markstrom. He does return. So, we don't have an 87 overall starter in Leonard, but we got Markstrom a bit cheaper. So, I think our team's still pretty good. And next year, guys, use the trade finder on Yarncroc. And Boston here has the best offer. Two fifth rounders. 
There's 24 offers. Pretty much every single other one is like a fifth and a sixth or a decent prospect and a seventh. Actually, Nashville, they are two fifths, but might as well trade them out of the conference. Again, we have a lot of forward depth. He would actually be in the AHL. Might as well trade him as well to save some cap space. Only $2 million, but everyone that's around his ratings making under that, so makes sense for us. And next year, guys, we're trying to get a huge shout to Chicago for Jonathan Taze, obviously one of the best two-way centers in the league. 88 overall there. Still has good speed, face-offs, 93, awesome defensive stats, five stars. Making 10.5 million, but Comfort to Foley here combined for 8 million, so an extra 2.5 million to get Taze, and Comfort would actually probably be in the AHL. I kind of regret probably taking him from the expansion draft. Just wasn't worth his salary. To Foley with signing of Hoffman, you can basically trade one of the two, and I think To Foley has a bit more value, even though the same rating. Lander there is one of the medium league guys we just drafted. He's actually the lowest rated of the three. Ingram they want. I know we just signed him, but we have a lot of goalies. If he helps us get Jonathan Taze, we're going to do it. So let's see what Chicago says here. Trades rejected. I mean, the value there looks pretty equal to me. Let's see. I mean, you know what? Let's do this. Instead of uh, Ingram, we'll do Tarasov, medium starter. He's got a bit more value. See if that pushes it through. And trades accepted. We just got Jonathan Taze in Seattle. So I'm sitting through the summer, guys, and San Jose just offered us two first-round picks for Kadri, which seems like a ton of value. I'm thinking we have Taze as first-line center, Stahl second. I mean, we could even move Stahl to the third. Don't we be the second-line center? That's a lot of value, but we are trying to win right now. I'm just, I'm just going to take a look here and see kind of like what the picks add up to. So Kadri must have a lot because they're actually, with the 4th and the 5th, it looks like the value is on our side. So I'm going to say no to this, but I'm considering it. We're going to show the second season, guys. As you can see there, team stats is champion. I'm going to show you the lines. Pretty excited for this season. Hopefully we get back to the playoffs. We can actually win a game this time. So Max Domi there is on the first line with Jonathan Taze and Andre Kasha. We have Hoffman with Kadri and Bailey on the second. Bucinovic, Stahl, and Kiryanov on the third, and then Ernie, Lowry, and Janssen on the fourth. So a lot of depth there. We finally have a couple potential superstars, I think, in Max Domi, Jonathan Taze, uh, even Kadri, Stahl, if you never know if they play well. Top pair, Giordano, McDonough. Look at that plus three, which is awesome. Carlos Spurgeon get a plus one, and Flurry Carlson get a plus three. So our defense is working perfectly with this coach in this system. Goalies there, Markstrom, we obviously brought back as a starter. Subban backing him up. Special teams here, I think the two power plays are both getting plus one. Penalty kill there, the first one's getting plus three, so lots of like, you know, good chemistry things going on with this team. AHL team here, plus three there on the second line with Fitzgerald and Gagne. First line's actually pretty solid. Goudreau, Charche, Kraus. Kraus is in the AHL, so that kind of gives us some flexibility if we make a trade or whatever. Fukali, Miskar, two goalies. I think Byfield's back in juniors. Defense there, all 70 plus. So again, pretty solid team. We're going to start with the Sim here. Hope for the best. And we got some breaking news here, guys. Boston's actually fired their head coach. Forgot to mention, we actually hired a new AHL assistant coach and AHL goalie coach over the offseason. There was a really good head coach available, but I think his contract was like our entire coaching budget total. I'm not sure. We have owner mode turned off, so how like the coaching budget works, but whatever. Uh, right now, good record. 10-4-4 four four as we lose to Tampa in OT. Hopefully, we can keep it up. And this is kind of funny, guys. Chicago's offering us Tyler Toffoli back along with a third-round pick. For a second, Fedorov there has got low top four potential and a third. So basically, Fedorov in a second. But I feel like our team's good enough. We don't really need to fully. Although we actually have been struggling a bit. You can see we're 22, 16, and 7 there. I think we should be all right, though, in terms of a playoff spot. And Anaheim just traded Cam Fowler to the Ottawa Senators for two second round picks. Honestly, it's kind of cheap, but maybe because he's making so much, they got him for less. And this here is kind of crazy. New Jersey gave up a first round pick and a sixth for Philip Deneau and Jordan Wheel. A first round pick for an 81 seems like way too much. Even if they're in a playoff spot and it's a rental or whatever, whatever like the situation is, I would just never make that trade. As you can see here, we've actually been, I don't know, like we're basically hanging on. Philly here gets Alex Steen in a third for Rupsaw. He's got top six potential in a fifth. I did actually see he was on Calgary. We were well above 500. Now we're kind of just a little bit above it. A couple weeks till the deadline. Hopefully he can keep winning. Toffoli does end up getting trade to Arizona for a couple second round picks. And Adam Larson there is on the move again to the Vancouver Canucks for two second rounders. Kind of crazy, actually, just how many defensemen we have at the beginning of this. And David Perron there getting traded for a second and a third, along with Carl Gunnarsson. Tons of trades. Oh, shit. Edmonton gave up Philip Broberg and some dude for Josh Anderson. Josh Anderson's a good player. As you can see, he's actually up to an 84 overall, but Philip Broberg's a very good defensive prospect. It's a lot to give up. So it's kind of cool, actually, how a lot of trades are coming down in the you know, couple weeks leading up to the trade deadline. 
Bugstad, second. I mean, we already have four, six centers. I just don't need a center right now. We can make two more trades here. Basically, we're looking for another impactful player. Like, we have a lot of depth. We need, you know, playmakers. Columbus then trades Ryan Murray, McMichael, Alexiev. So I guess they're just rebuilding because, yeah, they trade away a bunch of roster players there for prospects. Of course, trade away Anderson for Broberg. Hamus there on waivers. He's old. We do not need him. So looks like we'll be 30, 24, and 8 at the deadline. 68 points. We're probably around a playoff spot. And we actually do have the last wildcard spot in the West, so it's going to be close. Taze our leading goal scorer, 54 points in 62 games. Like I said, we can make two more trades. We'll see what's out there. I'm looking through the trading block, guys, and check this out. St. Louis paid a 41-year-old Joe Thornton $7 million on a two-year deal. I don't know what they were thinking. So I was thinking, guys, because we have Janssen play on the fourth line and Kraus in the AHL, we might as well trade him, put him on the trade finder here. And I think the best offer came from New Jersey, a third and a fourth round pick. It kind of sucks he didn't develop for us, but sometimes that happens. And having him on the fourth line, we might as well just have the calf space. So get Kraus playing the AHL right now. Hopefully he gets ready up for next year. And of course, that gives us an extra three and a half million in cap space for free agency. And next year, guys, having a big trade at the Boston Bruins, a bit of a risky one for Tuka Rask, one year left on his contract, 90 overall goalie, not having the best season. Neither is Boston, champion team stats, their record there, not looking good. So I'm offering the Markstrom, obviously he's taking over as the starter goalie spot. And then Bushnovich here, he's playing on our bottom six, not really doing that great. Contract's about to expire, I'm probably not going to keep him. So might as well flip this and hopefully re-sign Rask, especially if he plays well for us the rest of this season. See what Boston says. And trades accepted. We're calling up power luck. I love it. So after the trade deadline, guys, here's a quick update look at our team. Obviously, forward group is still pretty similar. Cash, I didn't even realize. We're having a really good season right now on the first line. Almost 50 points. Hoffman, Kadri, Bailey on the second. Ernie, Stahl, Griano on the third. Hayden, Lowry, Kraus on the fourth. So even after trading away, Buchnevich there. Team is still looking pretty good. Same goes for Johnson as well. Like, we lost two decent forwards. And I think our forward group is still very solid. Defense untouched. Fleury's actually 83 now, so defense is looking really, really solid. Then goal, 90 overall to Karask. There's actually a couple other guys available too. Jordan Bainton was on the block, same with Pecorine, but Rask was the highest rated. We've actually got a couple former Boston goalies actually there in, in Malcolm Subban too. So hopefully this team's a playoff team. All right, guys, so the season just ended, and it's going to be close whether or not we make the playoffs. We actually made a crazy push here at the end. What did we win? Six of the last seven, and even the last game they lost in OT. So we tried making that push. 84, I think, what is that, uh, 93 points? I feel like we should be good enough. AHL team, again, had a very solid season. Please be in the playoffs. <sighs> Last wildcard spot. Are you kidding me? Sharks there, Flames, Golden Knights, Oilers again, crushing it. So strange to see. And the Central, usually the teams with two uh, wildcards, but that is not the case. Predators there, actually, or Kings, Predators, two former great teams. Tays, 71 points, 82 games. I really like that trade. I'm hoping to Rask had decent stats for us and he'll actually come back at a reasonable price. Domi 63, Giordano 62, 37 years old, and he's still crushing it. That's unreal. Kadri at 60 this year, played on second line center. Wow, 36 goals for Kadri. That's actually true to real life. He gets 30 goals, he play on second line center. I think he could grow to 85. Hoffman at 60 points. He's got to go up from 83. Same with Kasha there, Bailey. So a lot of guys having some pretty big years. McDonough, Stahl had almost 50. He needs a new deal. Griana, 23, was hoping for a bit more from him, but you never know. Carlo, Ernie, Lowry. Lowry doesn't have as good as a year, but he's playing fourth line center, so kind of to be expected. Rask here, so a lot of these stats are playing on Boston where they weren't that good. I wish it would show, or actually, I think we can check. All right, so on our team, 8, 6, and 1, 0.917 and 2.39, so record's not that great, but a lot better stats than before when he was playing on Boston. Hopefully, it can carry that um, now into the playoffs. Also, quickly, guys, want to take a look at the AHL team. Charche, 69. Howluck, 66. Goudreau there, 60. So, if some of those guys can grow, I mean, I think a few of them are already 78s. Obviously, whenever you have AHL guys on cheap contracts coming through making the NHL team, just a huge bonus. Let's see. Ovechkin, 114 points. Same with Stammer. Wow. So, does Ovi win the Art Ross because he had more goals? I honestly forget the tiebreaker. Sagan, Radulov, Giroux, McDavid, Kuznetsov, Dreisal, Marchesto, 95. Giroux had 60 goals. What the heck? I thought it had been Ovechkin. That, <laughs> what an insane year. Two guys, 114 points. And what is that? Seven guys with 100 plus points? Kind of crazy. President's Trophy winner was the Philadelphia Flyers. I mean, Giroux had 60 goals. Carhartt's a good young goalie. 
Vegas there, pretty big bounce back. I don't think they did that well last season. Buffalo there, finishing top five in the league. New Jersey as well, seventh there, so they finally turned it around. Let's see, we finished 13th in the league, so still pretty good. Even though we had the last wild card spot in the West, Central teams were actually worse than us. Colorado there, 88 points. Geez, so the Central is really bad now, which is kind of surprising. And the last team in the entire league, who's it going to be? LA Kings, yeah, 68 points. That's rough. And look at this, guys. In the first round of the playoffs, we're up against the Edmonton Oilers. Droy Settle here is now a 92. McDavid a 96. Chase on 84. They traded for Anderson, of course. News there still an 86. Pugliari was up to an 82. Came back to the team. Neil there 81, so he's done okay. Stevenson, Yamamoto's an 80. Cassian Kara, Bo Bennett. Defense there. Bouchard's up to an 82. Traded for Merrill. Ruedel there on the bottom pair. Benning. Who's their goaltender? Koskinen and then... Mazdik a 73 backup. They don't even need goalie, I guess, or even the defense. They're just all out offense with David Drysdale carrying the team. It's working for them in the sim. In real life, doesn't quite work out that well, but we'll see here. Can we get our first playoff win? Obviously, we'd like to win a Stanley Cup, but I guess we'll do it by baby steps. And I think we're playing in Edmonton here the first two games, so here we go. There we go. 2 1 OT win. A 6 2 win. We actually have a playoff win. Come on, back to Seattle. There we go, another win. Chance for a sweep here against the Edmonton Oilers in the first round. And we pull it off. That is awesome. And in the second round here, guys, we're up against the Vegas Golden Knights. Honestly, I'm surprised to see them so high in the standings. I thought they were on a bit of a decline. They had, I think, Stastny, Pacioretty, Smith, who are all still on the team. They've been on the block for like the past year plus. So their team looks very similar, just with the addition of Cody Glass. As well, they've added Hansel as a fourth-line center. Defense, they've added Chris Tanev. And Delzato, other than that, the same. Goaltenders, Flurry's a starter, still he's only an 85. And Ferguson's the backup there as a 76. I feel like a lot of these teams do not run a high enough rated backup. But I guess if your starter's playing a lot of games for you, it's not too big of a deal. Tay's there, 8 points so far through 5 games, playing really well. And we actually accidentally simmed the first game. Big win for us. That was in Vegas, 7-2. to two. We'll see if we can keep it up here. Second game in Vegas. 4-3 loss. It's actually our first loss of the playoffs. And then we followed up with a 3-2 OT loss. You hate to see that. So we're down 2-1. we got to win at least one of these next two games. Come on, boys. Are you kidding me? So, big first win against Vegas. Lose the next four straight. Made it to the second round. So hopefully next year we'll make it to at least the conference final. Maybe even the Stanley Cup finals. We seem to keep getting better. But that is still a bit disappointing. And check this out, guys. First overall pick goes to LA, who finished last. Chicago there jumps from 13th to 2nd. New York Islanders jumping from 10th to 3rd. Some pretty crazy jumps so far in this draft lottery. Uh, next year, I actually want to show you guys just who won the Stanley Cup, all the awards. Dallas Stars there taking on the Stanley Cup. Jonathan Taze, 11 points in 9 games, so not too bad. Definitely, he's a, he's a big salary, but I feel like that trade was worth it for us, especially since we shed a lot of salary to get him. Let's see, Dallas Stars here. Abs in 6, swept the Sharks, swept the Knights, and then best of 7 there with the Capitals. Capitals beat the Devils in six, sweep the Leafs, Sabres in five, and then of course lose to the Stars. Our AHL team, I think, made it to the second round before losing the Syracuse Crunch, and Providence actually won the AHL. So check the awards here next. I doubt we got an award, but you never know. Stanley Cup, Presidents, Clarence S. Campbell, Prince of Wales. Stamkos gets the Art Ross, so Obi had more goals. I wonder what the tiebreaker would have been. I have no idea. Um, Hart Memorial Trophy, Ovechkin, Ekman Larson there, James Norris, Marchessault, Lady Bing. Vesta line in there with the Calder, Sagan, Con Smythe, Bobrovsky, Vesna also got the William of Jennings, Hannafin, Bill Masterton, Sim there, the Vegas coach, got the Jack Adams, O'Reilly, Selkie for the third straight year, Ovechkin, Ted Lindsay, Drew, Maurice Richard, which I still found kind of insane. So AHL team, I, we had a pretty good AHL year. Were we good enough to get a team award for the regular season at least? Unfortunately, no. Individual awards here, Cole Caulfield, most points. He's going to be tearing it up for Montreal. Lindholm, MVP, Newhook, uh, most goals. Surprise actually wasn't Caulfield. Sokolov, outstanding rookie and best D-man. Colorado got a pretty good player there. Kakinen, best goalie. Versteeg, MVP of the playoffs. He's still going. Wallstrom there, sportsman strip. Uh, McCann, community involvement. Deming there, lowest goals against. All right, so we're heading to the draft now. Each year we made the playoffs. Each year we've gotten better, but this has to be our year. We definitely can't lose Rask either. I think that's very, very important. So hopefully we have a good draft here. And then go from there. And taking a look at the draft class, guys, this is kind of surprising. Jesper Wallstedt, franchise potential as a goalie. Still only ranked 12, though. Luke Hughes there is ranked uh, 10. 
Let's see. Sillinger, high top six. Wong's medium elite. Ratty. So I don't think there's any franchise players. Looks like a couple, or actually a few created players. I'm wondering if there's any medium elite guaranteed. Ooh. Oh, that's nine. The one here, though, pretty much guaranteed. Rank 71. Definitely got to go after him. And right here, guys, the list of players that became a scout. One of them is Zidane Char, which I thought was pretty cool. He actually joins the Rangers there, it looked like. which, Or, sorry, he retired as a Ranger. That's what it was. All right, so pre-draft interviews. Honestly, I didn't really feel like it did much for me. Maybe it's because I kind of already know most of the players in this draft. But regardless, we'll get started with the draft here. I think we'll probably just... We'll probably just pick where we pick, save our trades for the offseason, the deadline. So first pick here is number 18. Maybe we can get something here. Actually, we probably should have traded up to get Wallstead. Trekker there is guaranteed medium top four. I know for a fact he is. Looks like all the medium elites are gone. So we'll just double check. Yeah, we'll go with Chika here. He should be decently rated as well. And 62 overall, medium top four. It's not too bad there. When do we have to get up? For an eight or a medium elite let's see so wallstead went at 12 could have traded up six spots and actually before him was a medium elite every pick or cylinder high top six the rest they're all medium elite oh well and next pick here guys is number 50 not gonna risk it i'm taking this mayorov guy hopefully he's medium elite and he is let's go 53 overall makes up for our first round pick that is a steal in the second and in the third here i think we can actually get a guaranteed low elite guy if we want him, um, that dude, 50-50 low elite, but like I said, guaranteed 117. Don't need to take him right now, but let's just do it anyways. What's his rated? 48. And next year, guys, in the fourth round, I'm going to take this Topi Rutu guy. I just kind of like his name. Please be decent rated. 62 overall. That's actually pretty decent. Could probably turn into a player. Obviously, we only have one season left, so we're not going to have enough time, but just in general, that's not a bad player. Some stars here. The completely unknown guy from Norway. Please, scouts, don't let me down. Bottom six. In the fifth round, it's not terrible. This guy right here, Vishnevsky, 50-50 low elite. Russian defenseman. Low top four. That's not bad at all. Our next pick here, guys, is in the sixth round. Looking for something good. Quinn is probably a low top six. I don't recognize him. Let's see. What is he rated? Low top nine. I mean, for the sixth round, really can't be too upset. And we have another sixth round pick here. I'm going to go with Jeremy Lamb. Almost for sure is not medium elite, but our scouts like him. Medium seventh. Why are our scouts liking that guy? I think we actually have two seventh round picks as well. I'm going to go with Erat here with the first one. 50-50, medium top six. Then we'll take, looks like Franzen with the next. Medium bottom six. Not the greatest. Oh, actually, that was our last pick. That's fine. We got a ton of picks there. Definitely a lot of uh, assets to work with. And we're going to have to resign phase here, guys, with 30 million in cap space. I actually just fired our NHL goalie coach. His staff chemistry wasn't very good, so we'll have to get a new goalie coach. Other than that, I made offers on the rest to resign them, so hopefully they'll say yes. Hoffman there up to an 85. Doesn't want to come back. 6.3 million. So he just plays well for us for the one year. Now he wants to be gone. Carlo, 84, 4.8. I mean, that's pretty fair. I'd much rather. A one-year deal though if we can get him at one year for four million and then hypothetically afterwards we get him like five million or something that'd be better stall 36 84 it's gotta be for the right price He's getting up there in age 3.9 is risky um i do not know about stall especially with byfield is he gonna be good enough to maybe make the team kasha 82 surprised 5.2 for 82 if he doesn't go up in rating that's just ridiculous i'm gonna qualify him and we'll see what happens. Also, guys, forgot to show you. Uh, Taser went up in rating, now in 89. So, love seeing that. And check this out, guys. Kadri had 61 points last season with 36 goals. And he actually dropped in rating to an 83. No idea how that works. Also, Lowry dropped in rating to an 80. But I kind of saw that happening. He was playing fourth line center. Doesn't want to resign with us. But I'm going to make him $1.6 million offer there to come back. Be our fourth line center. If he says no, we'll find somebody else. So, Hoffman. Again, it's going to be tough to sign him if he doesn't want to come back. Get right wingers here. Guryanov, Kasha, we made the qualifying offer on. Kasha, he's got to go up in rating for that money to make sense. Guryanov, this is actually quite fair, I think, for one year deal. And looking at our defense here, as long as Carlo comes back, we're all set. We have our top pair, Carlo Spurgeon, sick middle pair. Maybe even Flurry actually steps up. And then Carlson with whoever on the bottom pair. Now, goaltenders, Rast dropped here to an 87 from a 90. Doesn't want to resign. I know, good chance Binnington and Rene both could be free agent goalies. 
what would he be looking at? 5 million. I'm going to just risk it. Hopefully, there's a good free agent goalie. Malcolm Subban be our backup. 1.3. We'll give him uh, 1.25. Feel like he was fine as a backup goalie. Larry rejected our offer, guys. He says he wants to test for agency, so let him do that. Carlo Lou accepts. That's awesome. So our defense is intact. Grianov accepts. Hayden accepts. He actually went for like 150k two-year two-way deal. Goudreau as well. 78 overall could be our fourth liner for us next year. Subban. So we have a backup goalie. Dauphin there. Mostly just gonna be all HL guys now, but we actually do have a good amount of depth, at least for like the fourth line forwards. And I think we'll have a decent amount of money too. So. I need to make an offer on Stahl, Hoffman, and I think that's it. Stahl and Hoffman have 25 million in cap space. He has a starting goaltender. Hoffman doesn't want an extension, so we just gotta let him go. Hopefully, he can fill that void with somebody else. Stahl, I'm a bit worried about because of his age. Kasha as well. I don't know. I'm just not convinced. Like, there's no growth in his rating. And then stall there. I feel like I'm willing to do one year at 3.5. If he says yes to that, we'll bring him back. And as you can see right here, head coach is coming back, so that's good to see. And also, our associate coach is coming back, so that's good to see. And our assistant coach is coming back, so we just have to hire our new goalie coach, like I was saying. Stahl rejected, though. We'll try offering him an extra 100k. And there we go, guys. Eric Stahl did accept our offer. Ended up giving him 3.75. Also, Larson there. He was one of our meme league prospects. And he's 67 overall now, so he's probably good enough to make the AHL team. But Byfield's still 74, which kind of sucks, because I was hoping he might actually make the NHL team this season. And Bergman here rejects our offer and wants to go to free agency. That's fine. So... For agency starting now, we have a ton of money to spend. Hopefully there's some pretty big fish out there. Obviously, main goal is getting a starting goaltender. Not even just a starting goaltender, an elite goaltender. And then even just another player with that. <sighs> that sucks. So not a great free agency class. We have a ton of money to spend. Almost $22 million. And Sezikis, they put at the top. $6.5 million for 83. That's a joke. Hoffman there. We could actually bring him back. Josh Anderson could actually bring him, him in as well. Six million for both. Ryan Murray, he's probably the best value there. 27 years old, 85 overall, only wants 5.7. Kasha, I don't get how he's asking for 5.6 and 82. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Dougie Hamilton as well, 85. So he, Hamilton and Murray, they actually make sense there, the D-men, in terms of value. The forwards, though, I think they're asking for way too much. Please be a goalie. Brain Holpe, there we go. Jordan Bennington, Tuka Rass, they're all there. I mean... Let's see, so Rast's the oldest. Dubnik's actually an 86 now. I've seen in the trade block, he was like an 84. So Rast's 34, that's a bit concerning. Holpe, 31. So I feel like we should go with Holpe, because he also has an elite role there, whereas Bennington's role is starter. But Bennington is almost a million bucks cheaper. I feel like we have so much money, though. The 800k shouldn't matter. Might as well bring in an elite goaltender in Brain Holpe. We'll offer him, uh, do we, do we offer him 6-9... 695 or just we'll do 69 right on four years hopefully uh, no one else makes him an offer and like i was saying guys looking at forwards here the two best ones are hoffman and anderson both 85s one about six million anderson has five star physical 91 aggressiveness body check durability strength also he can score i feel like probably with the new chemistry system too he'd be a really good fit and we have like 22 million even with holpy we could actually sign both these guys brady kachuk though i just noticed is a Ooh, Brady Kachuk's an RFA. Now that's very interesting. Is this a second round pick territory? 4.4? .4? All right, guys, so we're now trying to get our second round pick back from the Columbus Blue Jackets, offering up two third rounders. I feel like they should say yes, especially since the pick's on the block. Trades rejected. Are you kidding me? I mean, luckily we have a ton of picks in this year's draft. Let's add Devil's fourth rounder here. Come on. There we go. All right, guys, like I was saying, going to make Kachuk an offer here. 21-year-old, 84 overall, RFA, medium elite potential. So the max we can offer him is 4.237, and still only have it be a second-round pick, so that means it has to be that right there. And if we do, what would it be? He actually gets cheaper if it's a bit longer. Where is he the cheapest? Four years, 4.325. So I could definitely see him saying yes to this. I feel like that's a pretty good offer. This year's second-round pick, hopefully... For whatever reason, Ottawa just can't match it. And after that, we still have 11 million, um, even if we like count in for Holpe. So I might as well go after the big fish as well in Hoffman Anderson. We'll make them both offers around what they're asking for. Hoffman, 6.5. I mean, he was just an 83 though. I feel like Anderson I'd probably prefer. We'll offer Anderson here 6.2 for four years. And Hoffman here will offer 6.5. I actually am thinking I would have rather paid Anderson more because he's younger. 
Aang kind of brings another element to the table, but whatever. And look at this, guys. Dylan Dubay is an RFA. Wants center to K for two years, which is so cheap. Why is Calgary not giving it to him? I'm going to try and steal him right now. Actually offer him, what is it? 1.225, one way, one year. I think that's the max. They'll give me up a pick. Lindgren here is also an RFA. Same with Sarah Jarvey. Try and get both those guys. Also going to make an offer on Mark Dano here. 78 overall, so if somehow we need some forward depth, I feel like he's a really good option for very cheap. Same goes for Mangiapane here, 25, 78. Can definitely play on our fourth line. And look at this, guys. Tampa Bay just offered us two first-round picks for Spurgeon and a third. I feel like we have to say yes to this, because with that money, we can just go and get Ryan Murray or Dougie Hamilton. And now we have two first-round picks to work with for trades. So immediately, I'm saying yes to that. We just opened up 5 million in cap space. We now have, yeah, 26 million, so <laughs> that's insane. Um, Dougie Hamilton there, one year older than Murray. Same potential, finer K less. He's right-handed like Spurgeon. Kind of brings a bit of a different element, he's bigger. So let's just go get Dougie Hamilton now. We have to make sure we get him though, so 5.75. This is costing us an extra 300K, but we got two first round picks, if it works out. And pull it here, guys, except our offer. He's just an AHL defenseman for us. Mangiapani will be on the fourth line, potentially, or AHL. Same with Dano. There's wall accepts as of now. Probably going to get matched by Ottawa. Kachuk rejects. Appreciate your interest. Going to go with another team. So kind of wasted a trade there getting the second round pick. But it was worth it to almost get Kachuk. So Jarvi rejects. Lindgren rejects. Ellie though accepts. Dubay as of now. We'll see if we can get him from Calgary. That was the only one we actually made a decent offer on. Because I could actually see him being in the NHL team. And look at that. Dougie Hamilton does accept. So I feel like we just fleeced Tampa. Upgraded our defense. And we got two first round picks for it. Anderson, though, rejects, didn't offer enough money, goes to LA, that's okay. Hoffman as well, both staying in the Pacific Division, both going to Cali. I figured we might not offer them enough money, and Holpe goes to Calgary. So this year, definitely signing free agents is a bit tougher. You're going to have to really overpay, just paying a bit more. I feel like other teams are actually going to be going out there and paying a lot more. And Jordan Bennington's not in free agency, so we have to make a trade. Because, I mean, Pecorine... I don't really want to start with Pecorine as my starting goaltender, so I guess, I don't know, do we sign him? That's pretty cheap, to be honest. He could even just be our backup if we go get a better goalie. I'll give him an offer, but I'm not too confident in it. And looking at the fragrance here, guys, I see Jane Schwartz is available. He's 83 overall now, but still, he has 90 everything for puck skills. He's still fast. His shot there is really good. I'm definitely going to bring him in, or make him an offer. I feel like he's kind of the same as Hoffman was last year, so... If he plays well for us, could put up similar production, cost us, I think, $2 million less. Now, Palmieri, we could bring in instead of Josh Anderson. Two-way guy. I still wish we would have given Anderson a bit more money. I'm upset with myself for that one. Definitely, you know, some mistakes here. First franchise. Holpe, we could have given more money to. Even made an offer on him and Bainton, but we might have been screwed if we did that. So, Palmieri here. I'll throw him some money. I'm not really expecting to get him, though. I'm not going to overpay my much. I feel like I'd honestly rather use that money in a trade where we bring on a ton of cap space. And as you can see here, Calgary did choose to match our offer to Dylan Dubay. Kind of figured that would happen. Palmieri rejects, didn't offer enough money, goes with Arizona. <sighs> Lejoie there, stays with Ottawa. Hopefully we can get somebody here. Hopefully we get Jane Schwartz. I mean, we got Dougie Hamilton. Rene goes with Chicago. Man, so free agency is a lot more competitive this time around. Schwartz goes with the Rangers. There was no one else interested in him when we made an offer. That sucks. We have 21 million here and nothing to show for it. Are you kidding me? Krejci. Uh, do we sign Krejci? 83 overall. Stats are okay. I can't believe that. Like, we just keep getting outbid. All right, guys, I'm going to throw 3.5 million here on Krejci just to try and bring in a forward because we need one. And then after that, of course, we're going to go see if we can make a trade. And so Krejci does accept their offer. I'm thinking with that, we'll probably move Stahl to the wing. And next year, guys, I'm actually going to make an offer on Miku Koivu. I saw we could still use another forward, and we have enough cap space. Rather than get someone cheap, he's got pretty good two-way stats. No offers on him right now, so I feel like 3.5 one year, he might say yes. And Koivu does accept their offer, so there we go. Still have about 10 million in cap space. All right, guys, right now I'm making a crazy offer for the Montreal Canadiens to try and get us that Stanley Cup. Carey Price making 10.5 million is a lot of money, but he's a 90 overall goalie. And we need a starting goaltender. They're a rebuilding team. Offer them Malkin Subban. That'd be kind of cool. Another Subban back in Montreal. Mayrov, we actually just drafted. Mealy potential as a defenseman. Value's on our side. We'll see what they say. Trades rejected. It says we need to sweeten the value just a touch. So I know we had the two Tampa Bay first round picks to work with. 
Now the one actually is in 2023, and I said we can't trade picks past 2022. So I kind of, I don't know, we should be allowed to trade the Tampa Bay pick, I think, because they offered it up to us. We didn't take it back. But we'll try and stay true here. Nothing past 2022. Let's add a second rounder there. And there we go. That might have actually been too much to add, but it's a lot of money. We had the cap space, and we now have one of the best, if not the best, goalie in the league. Now, after making that trade, guys, we need to sign a backup goalie. And I see that Georgia's available. 25 years old, 81 overall, only wants 700k. Um, not sure how that's the case. Two years. He's 81 overall, that's so cheap. I'm gonna basically double his asking right now because that seems oddly low. And Georgia did accept our offer, that's awesome. And look at what Montreal is trying to do to us, guys. After we trade them for Carey Price, they're now offer sheeting Kasha 6.2 million, which is a first and a third round pick. Apparently, we can't match that, even though I thought we had more money than that. So, I'm gonna say remind me in six days. He's still in 82, so it still seems like way too much money. So I thought about it, guys, and I just can't justify paying cash shares in 82, over $6 million. I'm thinking with that first and the third, we'll combine it with the Tampa Bay first, maybe one of our top prospects, and actually go out and get a legitimate first-line winger to play with Taze. I feel like that just makes more sense. All right, guys, so I want a sniper to play on the first line with Taze and Domi, trying to get Forsberg here from the Predators. 87 overall, as you can see there, he had, like, what, 60 points last year. He's got really good stats on him as well. Offering up Larson, he's our other melee prospect. Keeping Byfield, obviously. He could turn into a better player than Forsberg, and Forsberg's also got one year left, but we'll have enough money to re-sign him, and I want someone to play on that top line, try and win this cup this year. Value's been on our side, Forsberg's not on the block, so we have to do that. See what the Preds say? Trades rejected. Wow, I thought honestly that might have went through. Let's see if we can add something small. I'm gonna try adding this low top six prospect in Morrison, come on. And there we go. We just added Philip Forsberg. And look at this, guys. St. Louis just traded Soderberg a third in Bertuzzo for a first-round pick. Soderberg was in free agency, so they added just him to a bomb pair D-man a third, and they get a first-round pick. Not too bad. Chase on at $6.3 million for Dougie Hamilton. I think I'm going to pass on that. So heading into our third and final season, guys, here's a look at the team. I feel like it's pretty solid. we got Max Domi, Jonathan Tate, and Philip Forsberg on the first line. Stahl, Kadri, and Bailey on the second. Ernie, Koivu, and Gryanov on the third. Mangiapane, Krejci, and Kraus on the fourth. Defense here is very solid. McDonough, Giordano. Now, Giordano is down to an 87 opposed to a 90 or 89. But I mean, 37 years old. Kind of come to expect that. Hamilton and Flurry as a solid, solid top, or sorry, second pair. Surprise, they only get plus one. Like, you'd think they complement each other. Both played in Carolina. And then Carlson and Carl in the bomb pair. You can see two of the three pairs there get plus three, which is pretty sick. Price are starting goaltender, which is kind of insane. Georgia backing them up, so... I think we have, what, $21 million going into Price and Taze, but they won a couple gold medals, so hopefully can win us a Stanley Cup here. Also, I'll show you guys power play units there real quick. Um, so AHL team now, AHL teams, they're all right. I mean, as you can see, plus one on all the forward groups. Um, defense, mostly. I think, like, the forward, our offense and defense, pretty much all, like, mid-70s plus. So I think the AHL team should be in the playoffs again this year. Whether or not they're the Calder they Cup, who knows. Team stats, there you guys can see, is champion. Captaincy has not changed. I actually want to check a look at the ratings. Just because price and net should give us a pretty big boost. So 90 offense, 92 defense, 88 goal. And again, if you guys don't know, the ratings are actually a lot more accurate now. You can see Anaheim's there quite low. Um, before, we'd have like 95 goal tiny with the current goal tiny duo. But now, kind of more accurately represents it. So hopefully, like I said, this is our year. We'll start the sim. See what happens. And this is kind of funny, guys. LA is now offering us Broussard in a third for a first and second round pick. Only Broussard's two years older, making 5.4 million. So right now we're 24, 21, and 3. Uh, what happened? Oh, Ryan Getzlav for Kling. Oh, it's not John Klingberg, but Ryan Getzlav's on the move to New Jersey. Kind of the opposite, I guess, of Scott Niermeyer. We went to Anaheim. What I was going to say is January was terrible for us. I think we had four wins total. Beginning of the year, we were pretty much double wins, like 12 and 6. We were even like, I think, 14 and 7, and January just sucked for us. Hopefully, though, we have a solid February here, heading towards the trade deadline. We can still make two trades, even, to boost up our team. We got another pretty big trade here. Josh Manson for Oliver Borkstrand. Uh, Borkstrand was also included with two second-round picks. Risk the line into the Capitals, along with David Backus. And going to Buffalo, I'm guessing there's, there's got to be a mean elite prospect in there. So we're about two weeks away now, guys, from the trade deadline. Back-to-back -back losses. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back losses. We cannot lose to Montreal with Carey Price in our goal. Okay, I was going to say, so we are just above 500 now. 
we had such a better start to the season. I'm hoping we can turn it around here. So we're the deadline here, guys. 31, 20, and 3. Back-to-back -back wins there against Columbus and Toronto. I feel like we're probably going to be right around the wild card spot. Let's see. And yeah, so we're two points out. We do have a game in hand, which means we'd be a point out if we win the next game. We can make two more trades here. We gotta do some. So one thing I noticed, guys, that's probably impacting why we're playing so poorly lately compared to the beginning of the season. Giordano has dropped from, what was he, an 87, maybe an 88, to an 84. Like, he just keeps dropping. Potential's now top six. McDonough's also gone down by one to an 87. But they still have pl top, or plus three, sorry, chemistry playing on that top pair together. So I don't know. Giordano's expiring. Price and net, still an 89. I noticed too, Byfield in junior right now, he's a 78. I definitely should have bumped him up in rating to be the same as Raymond and Holtz, so he'd be like an 80 right now, could probably actually be on our team instead of just tearing up junior. What is that? He's got 72 points in 38 games already. Wow, so yeah, he'll be NHL ready next season, unfortunately. We gotta win the cup by this season, so like I said, we'll see what's out there in terms of trade. All right guys, so I'm hoping I can save our season with this trade, trying to get Brent Burns from the Sharks, currently on the block. 36 years old, 88 overall, but he still has elite potential. Giordano's 38 years old, so two years older. 84 overall, a top six, so he's pretty much on his way to retirement, I think, in this final year. Also adding Cheka there, the solid defensive prospect. Values pretty equal, we'll see what they say. Trades accepted, so there we go. Check this out, guys. I was looking through the teams. Zadina here, 22 years old, 85 overall. Signed an $11.7 million extension for five years. That is insane. And last trade here, guys, we're offering the National Predators our 2022 first round pick and Mangia Pani for Victor Arvidsson. A really good contract there, 4.2 million, 85 overall. He's having an okay year. This is a steal for us if they say yes. Trades rejected. Okay, I thought that might have been too much of a steal. Also, too, guys, I wanted to show you because I think we're going to add a draft pick here. Montreal, good chance they win the lottery. We'll get. Shane Wright or even Mathis Savoie. We have so many late picks. I'll add a third rounder there to get Victor Arvidsson. And there we go. Trades accepted. That is awesome. Our team is pretty insane. So after the trade deadline, guys, our team status is champion. Hopefully, we can at least make the playoffs. Like, this team is way too good to miss. So first line, Domi, Tays, Forsberg still. Arvidsson with Kadri, Bailey on the second line. We got Ernie, Koivu, and Stahl on the third. And then Gurianov, Krejci, Kraus, the new fourth. They're getting a plus three. McDonough Burns, a pretty sick top pair. Hamilton, Flurry, Carlson, and Carlo. Like that defense in front of Price. Come on. Power play units there. Uh, I don't know why it always goes to the four man first. Looking pretty good. Like either one can definitely score. So hopefully this team can get it done. All right, guys. So it's the end of the season now, and I'm not feeling too confident. 41, 36, and 5. 87 points is probably not good enough. AHL team there, though, is crushing it. Let's see. Oh, we got in the playoffs. Let's go. I did not think A7 would be enough. We actually tied with the Kings. Wow. And the Jets. Wow. I can't believe it. Taze, I honestly thought for sure we weren't going to be in. And you guys are going to comment some crazy things we're going to have to do if we don't win the Cup, which still could very well be the case, but at least we have a shot here. So Taze, 75. Domi, 70. Forsberg, 69. Nice. Arvidsson, McDonough, Stahl, Burns. So Burns, minus 11. Maybe Sharks aren't too good anymore. How did Price do for us? Like, he's supposed to be one of the best goalies. 0.91, 2.69. It's not too bad. Georgia have stats there. Do not look very good for backup. Quick look at the AHL team. Charche, 72 points. Dude's just killing it. Same with Harlock, Ellie. Just, like, kind of signed some random dudes. Two-way contracts in the AHL and playing quite well. Looking at the entire league here. McDavid, 107. Again, wins the Art Ross. Stammer, Kucherov, Kuznetsov. So only four guys this time. 100 plus. And Marisha Shard does go to McDavid as well. Ovechkin there lost out by one. But I mean, 36 years old. He's still putting up 96 points. Still 90 overall. Very impressive. We'll check actually where he's finished in the entire league. I'm wondering if a bunch of teams in the West finished way below teams in the East. Because 87 points. Usually you got to have at least 90 to crack the playoffs. Washington there. President's Trophy winner. Let's see here. So yeah, Pittsburgh and New York Islanders. 12th and 13th in the league. Don't make it in. That hurts. Ottawa, Philly. Wow. Yeah, the West, we just sucked. 19th in the league, we squeak in. Winnipeg, 21st. That, uh, I feel bad, especially for those teams that finished 12th and 13th. And St. Louis, last in the league, 70 points. They really haven't done too well since winning that Stanley Cup, but we'll see what we play here in the first round. Again, hopefully can keep doing better and better. Maybe we're a Cinderella story this year. So in the first round, guys, we actually have a rematch with the Edmonton Oilers. 
Forward group there looks to be more or less the same. Defense, I think they've added Jake McCabe. Goaltending, they actually have an actual backup now, Cal McCard. Last time they had like a 74 or something. So, what we, I think we swept the Oilers, right? If I'm not mistaken. Hopefully, can have some success against them again here. First round of the playoffs. I mean, we are the wild, the lowest wild card, I think. So, they must have won the Pacific. First two games here in Edmonton. Please, boys. And back-to-back -back losses. Our team is too good to be... I don't understand it at all. I think McDavid Dreisaitl literally just carry this team so much in the sim. Here we go. Two games at home now. Tie the series up. We get one win. And it was the fourth game, so we have to win the next three straight for the reverse sweep. Odds are not in our favor. Oh my. Okay, here we go. Come on. And there we go. Keep it going. Keep it going. Back-to-back -back games there. We didn't let in a goal and then was that six game, 4-1 loss at home, first round exit. So wasn't meant to be, I guess, with the Seattle Sockeye. I felt like we had a pretty awesome team there in the last year, but that was my first time using the whole new chemistry system and all that stuff. I feel like we didn't do too bad. AHL team here, might as well just sim through quickly, see how they do. I think we're like pretty good, like I was saying before. Oh wow, did we just, I think we just came back from three to one to win that one, let's go. Uh, Florida's AHL team now. If we win this, we're on to the Calder Cup Final. Not looking good though, we have to get a reverse sweep. And we do not get it, we lose in five. So, at least, you know, they made the conference final there. Again, not the result we hoped for. I thought this team, especially with the moves we made, like getting Brent Burns and Arvison at the deadline, I don't know. Look at this guys, Philadelphia again with the draft lottery luck, jumping from 13th to first, are you kidding me? I think they went from like 11th or 12th to 2nd to get Nolan Patrick. Our pick there went from 3rd to 6th, so go figure. I didn't trade it, because like realistically, if you have a chance at first overall, Savoie, whoever, you're not going to give it up for one shot at the cup kind of thing. Same goes for Byfield, so I kind of try to keep it a little bit realistic. Hold on to some of those players and picks. Right there you can see Edmonton Oilers win the Stanley Cup, so 2 of the 3 years we lost to the eventual Stanley Cup winner. What that means, I'm not sure. Before I look at the awards, I actually want to look at the playoff tree. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit set. I thought our team was pretty good there. Didn't deserve to go out in the first round. Edmonton beat us. Sharks in seven, Stars in five. Red Wings in seven. So my favorite team there loses to my favorite Canadian team in the Stanley Cup Final. I, if Red Wings are back in the Stanley Cup Final in three years, I would absolutely love that. So team awards. I don't. Do we get? I don't think we got a single team or I don't think we got a single NHL award in this entire Cup or bust. Which honestly is so unfortunate. Calder there, Kuta, Dreisel, Halcon, Smythe, Bishop got the Vesna, and the William Jennings. Holden, Bill Masterton. Like, that's something we could have gotten. Con there in Minnesota with the Jack Adams. Barkov with the Selkie. Finally, O'Reilly doesn't win it. Stamkos, Ted Lindsay, McDavid, and Richard Shard. So, yeah, no NHL awards. The entire cover bust. Unfortunate. I felt like, you know, maybe our coach, like the first year as an expansion team, we make the playoffs. I feel like, you know, we definitely could have gotten the Jack Adams our first year. What are you going to do? Give us an AHL award at least. There we go. We won our division. There's something. Individual awards. Velarde MVP. Or sorry, most points and MVP. Love seeing that. Most goals. Dano. Okay, didn't realize that. That's six. So in the last year there, we got a couple AHL awards. So at least that counts for something. But like I was saying, guys, it was cup or bust. Making the playoffs every year with an expansion team was just not enough for us. So let me know in the comments section what the punishment should be. And I'll make sure I get that done for you guys. And as always, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Make sure to stay tuned for more NHL 20 franchise mode videos. And besides that, guys, thank you as always for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.